Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Over supper at the Cliff House, Luna, RJ, Finn, and Steffi related some of their most embarrassing stories. Eventually, as they cautiously broached the subject of a future without Eric, the talk turned serious. Finn recommended going for a late-night swim with RJ Luna and Steffi would stay in the house and get to know one another better, Steffi remarked with a smile. Luna was clearly not at ease. Luna and Steffi headed to the sofa to talk. Luna expressed to Steffi her excitement at the prospect of rekindling their relationship with Finn. It was Luna's admission that she was anxious to meet Steffi. Steffi remarked that she could sense Luna's strong affection for RJ. Steffi and Luna quieted down when Finn and RJ got back from their surf. RJ inquired as to what the women had been discussing. Wouldn't you like to know? Steffi laughed in response. Luna expressed her gratitude to Finn for asking her and RJ to supper. Finn expressed to Luna his desire for their relationship to remain unaffected by whatever beef, lie, and poppy may have. With a curious smile on his face, Thomas watched as Brooke described his and Hope's relationship as enjoying each other's company. In response, Thomas said that he and Hope had more in common than that. Brooke contended that Hope's recent divorce from Liam prevented her and Thomas from having a deep and meaningful connection. Additionally, Brooke recommended that Thomas give Hope some room. In response, Thomas said he was going with Hope's direction. You should understand more than anyone that Hope doesn't want to be with someone where his attention is divided, Thomas said. Brooke concurred. Thomas questioned whether Hope's choice of someone to go on with was a bigger factor in Brooke's resistance to Hope's moving on. Brooke conceded that Thomas had been attempting to improve himself. Brooke conceded that perhaps there was something about Thomas that she was blind to. However, she has made it quite obvious that she is not and may never be in love with you. Could you put up with that? Brooke inquired. Thomas took his belongings and made for the door instead of answering. Brooke thanked Thomas for talking to her before he left the design suite, but cautioned him that Hope's interest in him was probably only a phase. With grace, Thomas informed Brooke that he did not think that to be true. Liam assured Hope in the cabin on Brooke's land that he would always be there for her. Hope assured Liam that she will always be there for him. Hope assured Liam that she was all right and that he didn't need to be concerned for her. With a moment wish that things had turned out differently, Liam glanced down at the ground. Well, they didn't, in response from Hope. And this is my life now, without you, and you're going to have to accept that, Hope stated gently. When Liam reiterated that he would always love her and that Hope would always love him, Hope appeared both perplexed and upset. When Liam reiterated that Thomas had previously attempted to persuade them that their child had died, Hope grew irritated. She lost her temper and said that she had to move on from the past. Hope, according to Liam, wasn't about just hooking up. Liam didn't know her, and maybe he never had, Hope shot back. I am able to put my wants, my needs, my desires first, Hope stated. Liam voiced his worries about some of the choices Hope appeared to be making. Liam received harsh criticism from a distraught Hope for putting Steffi on the back burner and withholding a piece of his heart for her. Liam drew attention to the fact that Hope had kissed Thomas after defying his orders not to collaborate with him. You still ran to Steffi, Hope said in a harsh manner. Liam inquired as to what he needed to say or do to convince Hope. Hope was asked if she was on birth control by him. Hope snapped, telling Liam that was none of his business. Thomas heard Liam and Hope's heightened voices as he walked up to the cabin door. I don't know if I'm making the right or wrong decision. I just know what I want, stated Hope. When Thomas came into the cabin, he questioned Liam why he was there. Liam angrily said, I have a child who lives here. The kid was at Katie's house, Thomas noticed. Hope walked gently up to Liam, who had gone to the other side of the room when Thomas arrived. Hope's voice cracked as she replied, As much as it hurts me to say this, 
this is not your home anymore. Looking back at Thomas, Hope said, the man in my life now is Thomas, and I love him for that. A smile crept across Thomas's lips. Reaching over to embrace Thomas, Hope did so. Liam turned to walk out the cabin, a single tear falling from his eye as he did so. I don't know if I'm making the right or wrong decision. I just know what I want, Hope stated. Thomas asked Liam what he was doing in the cabin when he came inside. This is where my child resides, Liam angrily declared. Thomas mentioned that the kid was visiting Katie at her home. Hope stepped carefully across the room to where Liam had moved when Thomas had arrived. Hope broke into a crack of laughter. As much as it pains me to say this, this is not your home anymore. Hope sobbed after Liam left. Putting his arms around her, Thomas observed that Hope had confessed her love for him. Hope said, I guess I did. Liam looked through the open cabin door as they shared a kiss. Every fan of the bold and the beautiful, including Soap Hub, has an opinion of their own. We watch the good, the ugly, and everything in between for five days, and now we provide to you a helpful summary and a light-hearted assessment of B and B's past week. Viewpoint of the critic on the bold and the beautiful. Eric Forrester's plodding walk along life's runway remains an ambiguous, annoying, and emoji-inducing embarrassment. And before the plot completely devolves into absurdity and turns into a comedy, I, for one, would love to know just how many people can be made aware of the uncomfortable truth that Eric is dying and that he didn't really win the fashion battle. Three, maybe four, is what I would have stated. However, as of the last count, eleven people are fully aware of the current situation. And although I recognize that the plot requires suspension of disbelief in order to move forward, how is it that Eric, who has never before had trouble reading a room or failed to discern a surface mood, can't sense that something is wrong? As though Thomas and Steffi weren't crowded up in front of him, appearing to have just learned that their favorite relative was going to pass away. Additional B and B thoughts asterisk, although Hope told us that she loves Thomas for loving her, it's safe to assume that Thomas also heard that she loves him. Firstly, Liam is an absolute sleazeball. However, at least he's a reliable sleazeball. A waffler is a waffler forever. And at that, a compulsive waffler. Asterisk woe, Carter is supposed to be Ridge's best friend and an honorary forester. Asterisk, what does lie and Poppy's ability to pull off a Jerry Springer-style blowout in one of the senior offices say about the security at Forrester Creations? Even while it's excellent that we've now identified the true reason behind Lee's animosity and Poppy, it doesn't seem good to keep portraying Lai as an outright bully of a relative's child. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.